So it's time to fill the propane tank. Yes, it is. It's been a little chilly in the desert. And uh, we ran out of propane in one of our tanks. So it's time to go get it filled. Isn't it interesting that when you're using your propane at, for heat, it usually drains about 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Two, three o'clock in the morning, and then you have to get up. And I wake up. And it's in his brain clock, <laughs> or clock brain, or whatever. The furnace isn't isn't running. I don't know how I tell, but I do at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. or whatever the heck the time is. It was like me with our children. I could tell that they were up. He can tell when the propane tank is dry. Yeah. Fun times. So we're off to get propane. So this video is gonna be about five things that we added to our RV that we absolutely love. And need. And one of them is about propane. That's right. First thing we want to talk about is propane sensors. I've always been a skeptic of propane sensors because I've talked to a number of people that say they've tried that brand, they've tried this brand, they've tried whatever brand and no, uh, they don't work. So while we were at Quartzite, a good friend of ours said, well, I've got those these Mopicas and they work awesome. So I said, okay, we'll give them a try. So we installed our, our Mopica propane sensors onto our tanks and boy, do they work. They genuinely do work. I am sold. So how many times have you had propane go out on you and you didn't know what your tank level was? For me, it's been numerous times. These sensors are magnetic on the base. They're round sensors. They're magnetic on the base. And they, by magnet, they stick on the bottom of your propane tank. And then they actually check the volume of the size tank that you program into it and it determines how low or how high your propane tank is. Now the beauty about this is, is it works right off the Bluetooth of your phone. Mopeka has an app that goes on your cell phone and I just pulled up the Mopeka app and I pull up tanks and uh, it tells me exactly what the tank level is on both of my propane tanks so I can check it at any time. It's so convenient. And they work. They work extremely well. In fact, they work so well, I added a couple of Mopeka sensors to my gas tanks in the back of the rig, one for the toy and one for the generator, and they've been working awesome as well. A lot of you have propane tank compartments that are open on the bottom. And for that, Mopeka sells a separate plastic cage. Uh, so you put the sensor on and then you glue this this cage over the top of it so that if for some reason it does fall uh, The cage will keep it from dropping out and ending off on the side of the road somewhere I put cages on my fuel tank sensors and, and they work awesome for these my Compartment is completely enclosed and so I have no need for the cages on these tanks But man do they work? The other nice thing about the Mopica is that if you have a Victron Servo GX display for your uh, batteries and solar, we tied these Mopica sensors into the Victron app on the Servo GX. And so I can actually punch a button uh, inside the rig and I can see exactly what my tank levels are off of the, the Servo GX display, or again, I can just go right off of my phone. This has been a, it's, it's a great invention. These guys have done a great job and they work. Still loving your new mattress as much as I do? I love our new mattress from Brooklyn Bedding. It is the most comfortable mattress I can truly say I've ever slept on. Yeah, we should have upgraded this years ago. Absolutely, and they make it so easy. Yeah, they you do. go online, you pick your firmness, you pick your mattress size, you, you put your order in, 
They ship it to you for free. Yeah, it comes in a box, and it's all vacuum wrapped. Yeah. You just load it up into your bedroom, drop it on the on the bed frame. Absolutely. Open up the plastic. It comes out, and it it's ready to sleep on. Ready to sleep on, and you can sleep on it that night, yeah. like we did. Yeah. Yeah. And they offer 120 night sleep guarantee. Ten year warranty. A ten year warranty. Yeah. And it's made in the USA. In Phoenix, Arizona. Right here in Phoenix, Arizona. So it is It is also really cool that a lot of you that have already purchased our mattress, the mattress from Brooklyn Bedding, love your mattress. Yeah, we've had many, many, many emails. And even at, the, at our meetup this last week, uh, we had people come up and say how much they love their their new mattress, their upgraded mattress from Brooklyn Bedding. Yes, and it blesses our heart because we don't sponsor or, or promote anything unless we truly love the product. Yeah. And so when we hear you guys go out there and say, we love our mattress, thank you so much, it just, it, well, it cements the, us knowing that it's, it's what we're supposed to be doing. Yep, and so we've partnered with Brooklyn Bedding to be a sponsor for this channel and they've been a sponsor with us so uh, since last summer. We've been on our new mattress since last summer. And uh, so what do the people have to do to to get their upgraded mattress from Brooklyn Bedding? You go to rvmattress.com slash sweet travels and you put our code sweet travels in and you can get 20% off your first or your new RV mattress. Yep. It's it's a pretty good deal. We're really impressed with the company and we're proud to have them as a sponsor. Absolutely. You know, it's made in the USA. It's free shipping. And so these guarantees are amazing. And I, I just, we love ours. We just hope you love yours too. And it's something we should have done years ago. <laughs> yes, that's true. Another thing that we think is very essential in an RV is a smart shunt. What is a shunt? A shunt is an item that measures amperage as it goes in and out of a battery system. And the, the purpose of the shunt is to do just that, to count the amps that go in or go out and can give you a state of charge on your batteries. So many of you have got voltage meters in your RV that tell you what the voltage is to the battery. But that doesn't give you any good information on what the status of your batteries are. You want to know, you, you need to know what the percentage of life is left in those batteries. Now many of you with a robust solar system already have a shunt in your system. But what if you don't have solar? You say, well, what do I need a shunt for? If you've got a regular RV and you have wet cell batteries, as an example, or AGM batteries, you don't want them to drop that charge. You don't want to discharge them below 50%. You can really damage a wet cell or AGM battery if you discharge it below 50%. That's why it's so important to know what the state of charge is on your battery. Now, as, uh, on our lithium batteries, we can go down to 10, 5% and, and not damage those batteries at all. But if you have wet cells or you have AGMs and you discharge them below 50%, you've, you've done some damage to those batteries and their lifespan has shortened immensely. So you can put a shunt in your system even if you don't have a solar system. The shunt is placed in the negative battery line. So you take the, the negative from your batteries, you put it on one side of the shunt, then you take the other side and run it to the negative side of your DC system. Now the shunt will read the amps that go in and out and you set up your shunt by the type of battery or however many batteries you have. As an example, we set ours up and told it that we have 800 amp hours of lithium. So it, once it gets to a full charge, then it shows 100% and depending on the amps that we use on discharge, it will change that state of charge as the amps are taken out. 
Vice versa, if you plug in to shore power and you're charging your batteries, the amps are going back in through the negative side and it will tell you what your state of charge is. It will increase as the more amps go into your battery bank. Now we chose the Victron Bluetooth shunt for one important reason. Victron has an app for your phone and you can actually pull your phone out and look up on Bluetooth, you can, you can tie in to your shunt and you can see what your state of charge is on your batteries. Again, if you've got wet cells uh, or, or AGMs, you don't want to drop those, that, that state of charge below 50% because you're going to do some damage to those batteries. So it's good to know what your state of charge is. Now Victron sells a kit with the Bluetooth shunt and a monitor, and you can put the monitor in your basement down by your batteries or, or the cables long enough that you can put it inside your coach, and you can monitor the state of charge on your batteries, whether they're AGMs, whether they're wet cells, whether they're lithiums, whatever the case may be. It's just something that, that you really need to have in your RV, and it's an inexpensive upgrade, but well worth the money. The other thing I want to talk about is a tire pressure monitor system, or TPMS. In our opinion, it's cheap insurance and every RV should have one. Um, why? What does the TPMS do? Well, it, it comes in two parts. It has the main head unit, and what I mean by that is this is, this is the unit that, that sits inside your, your tow vehicle or inside your RV if you've got a a motorhome, and then you have uh, sensors, and you have a sensor for each tire, and you just screw it on the valve stem, and it's battery operated. Um, you have to replace the batteries once every year or two years, or you know, just depends on how long they last. But you have a sensor for each tire, and so if you have as an example, if you have a dually one ton with um, a three axle fifth wheel behind you, you're gonna need the main unit and 12 sensors. And the sensors come in two types. You either, they're either top sensors like a valve stem cap, or, they ha or you have what they call a flow through system, which it screws onto the valve stem and then it has another valve stem on top of that and you can take air in or let air out through that, that flow through sensor. Now why do we say that a TPMS is a necessary upgrade for RVers? Well, it's going to notify you before anything catastrophic happens. As an example, when we were traveling through Wyoming on our way to Montana last spring, uh, I was driving down the road, nothing was going on, nothing, nothing happening, and I just happened to glance out my mirror and I saw something come out from underneath the trailer. And I looked at Kelly and I said, did we just run over an, a, a, a blown tire or something on the road? And at that same time I said that, the TPMS started alarming. And it's a beep, 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 and it gets your attention quick. So immediately I knew, I knew that we had blown a tire. So I was able to get off the side of the road, off on the shoulder, safely, uh, without making any catastrophic damage. Because if you've ever had a blowout on a fifth wheel or a motorhome, you know that that rubber coming off at those kind of speeds can really create some damage to your RV. We were able to get off. We had just a little bit of damage, no body damage, uh, fortunately. We, we broke a propane hose and... And, you know, we got off the, the road safely. My point is here that it can, it can save you from catastrophic results as you're running down the road, stuff that you really don't want. The other thing that it measures, not only it measures air pressure in each of your tires, but it also measures the heat of the wheel. And so how can that help you? If you've got a wheel bearing, as an example, in your trailer, in a fifth wheel, or in a, a pull-behind trailer, or even a tent trailer, and you have a sensor on there, it's going to alarm if it gets above a certain temperature, notifying you that it's time to pull off and check something, because something's gone wrong. So if you have a bearing go out and it heats up the wheel, 
uh, again, you can you can get off the side of the road safely before you create any damage, major damage anyway, uh, to your rig. We also use the TPMS. Uh, I, I had a comment uh, last fall when we were traveling and doing my safety check as I was walking around and I got a comment and, and he said, uh, he says, I'm, I'm disappointed that you didn't thump at least one tire as you went around. Thumping tires is something that we used to do before TPMS. Uh, you could take a, a bar, a, um, some sort of a bar, and walk around, and, and you'd, you'd saw a lot of truckers do that. They'd walk around and they'd bang on their tires with these bars to make sure that it was holding air uh, in the tire. I get up in the morning on a travel day. Each travel day, I get up in the morning and I turn on my TPMS. I let it run. I let it cycle through. I let it get a hold of, of all the sensors on all the tires. I can measure each of my tires individually without having to put a pressure gauge on them. So I know exactly what my air pressure is on each tire on the truck, the two fronts, the rears, the rear axle of the truck, and all six fifth wheel tires. It's a huge benefit for me because I don't have to get up and, and before I leave and I don't have to put a, a pressure gauge on each individual tire to check the pressures. I can look at my TPMS as it cycles through and I can tell exactly what the pressure is in each of my tires on the truck and each of my tires on the trailer. The other thing that is, we think is very important is if you flat tow behind, say, a Class A. If you're flat towing a Jeep or you're flat towing a car, um, you should have TPMS sensors on your flat tow vehicle. The reason for that is, again, you could be running down the road and you could have a blowout on your flat tow vehicle and it, it start, it, we've heard of fires that have started because of a blowout on a flat tow on the tow vehicle, um, on the towed, and it creates massive, massive damage. So it's really important to have tire pressure monitor system or tire pressure monitor sensors on your flat towed vehicle uh, behind you. So again, in an instant, you can tell if something's going wrong without looking at a bunch of smoke out your side mirror and going, oh my gosh, I guess we got a problem back there. The last thing we want to talk about uh, is a dash cam. Everybody today should have a dash cam. Uh, as an example, we have some friends here in Yuma, and she drove into Walmart with her vehicle, and she slowed down and stopped and let a lady walk in front of her. And as she started to proceed further, the lady turned around and walked into her car and banged into the car. Well, obviously Lynn was really upset and not sure what she needed to do so she exchanged insurance information with the lady uh, phone number that sort of thing and they called their insurance company and said this is what happened uh, would you like to see the dash cam footage well the insurance company looked at the dash cam footage and made the determination that the lady probably did that on purpose and they never heard another thing from her again it's again it's cheap insurance and what we have and what we really quite honestly recommend is a viofo it's just a little triangle dash cam like this um, it's got a it's got a screen you can monitor the screen here on it the uh, it's set up the reason i bought this one was for the truck because the truck has got a flat windshield but you can you can adjust the lens on this so that if you're on a on something like that you can adjust it or if you're on a straight up and down you can adjust it like this it's really easy to use uh, we have a 256 gig micro SD card in here and uh, it, it just works flawlessly we've been using this for a couple of years we actually use it on some of the footage uh, in our truck but it it connects extremely easy you actually mount uh, the the mount for it on the inside of your windshield with 3M tape. It's it's small enough. It's not going to get in your way. And then the camera's got a little slot on it. You just put the camera up here. You drop it on the slot, and you're done. And then when you turn it on, you can see your 
your video in the screen. Now, we have this in the truck, but we also carry it in the car. It runs off a 12 volt, so it comes with a cable uh, that you can plug into the camera and then plug the other power into a 12 volt receptacle in your vehicle and uh, it, it works extremely well. Now I will tell you, the reason that we like this Biofo is it's pretty, I call it idiot proof. You can't, you really can't break it. Uh, it's, it's so easy to use. You just set it, turn it on, forget it, let it run, and it does its thing. We've been so, so happy with this. In fact, Viofo contacted us a couple of months ago and asked if we would be interested in reviewing their 4K version of their dash cam. And we said, sure. We were so happy with, you know, the regular 1080p version. We said, sure, we'd, we'd love to give it a try. Unfortunately, we haven't been traveling uh, since we received the camera. So we haven't had an opportunity to really give a good review on it. This Viofo, this A319, is it's just foolproof I, it, it, it just works and i can't say enough good things about it it's i, I believe it's less than 100 bucks on amazon now so again it's just really really cheap insurance you know if you're driving down the road uh especially if you're hauling an rv how many times have you been on, in your rv driving down the freeway and somebody comes screaming up next to you and jumps in front of you and cuts you off because they didn't want to get behind you to take the exit that's 10 feet up in front of you. Those sorts of things will be captured on your dash cam and you can give the footage to law enforcement and, and rest assured that they're going to take care of it. It's just, it's just a really good peace of mind and we think, we think everybody with an RV should have one of these in their vehicle. Well, that's our top five items to upgrade for your RV, at least our top five items that we think you should upgrade immediately when you get your RV. Absolutely. I hope this helps you guys. We had to show Big Red in here. You guys haven't seen Big Red in a few <laughs> weeks, so we figured we'd throw Big Red in the picture. Big Red's on vacation. He's taking a break. <laughs> yeah. Hope you got something out of this, guys. Uh, we just, we, we really feel strongly about the five items that we listed. Those are our top five things that we really think every RVer should upgrade. Yes. So we're going to wrap this one up from Yuma, Arizona. It all starts with an idea. And take those ideas and turn them into reality, which become memories. We'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye-bye.